I'd like to call to order the Quin City of Quincy License Board agenda hearing this evening, October 22nd at 4.02 p.m. Sue, can you please call the roll? Sure. Chief Cadigan? Yes. Director Duca? Present. Commissioner Jones? Here. Chief Keenan? Here. Chair Crispo? Present. I'd also like to uh, read into the record the open meeting law pursuant to the open meeting law any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible we will go ahead and go right to agenda item number one here regarding the request of the Quincy Chamber of Commerce for a special use permit, beer and wine license for the annual holiday pop-up market at 1469 Hancock Street. The market is scheduled to run from November 22nd to December 22nd and Tim Cahill and Melissa Burke are here to speak of the event. If you could please come forward. This is not here, actually. She's off, Welcome, Tim. Hi. How are you all? Good. Hi. Good. Uh, very good. So uh, this is this year, we chamber generally runs a pop-up shop, usually it's Discover Quincy that gets the license. So this year, the chamber's doing it. It's a little different than in the past. We'll have individual stalls for vendors as opposed to one sort of central spot. And we're asking uh, for the board's approval to add um, a beer garden. Um, Widowmaker, who has, they have done our food festival every year that we have down on the um, Adams Inn, and we'd like to invite them in to be uh, an added draw for the food for the uh, pop-up shop. So that's what we're looking for. The dates actually, I mean, um, we're going to, right now the plan is to be open the day after Thanksgiving, so it'll be on Black Friday, and go up until December 22nd which is the Sunday before Christmas, I believe. Mm -hmm. And as of now, the plan is to be open three days per week with possible Sunday, if that's okay, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then probably the first Sunday, um, because that's the day of the Christmas parade, I think will be good to be open then, and then the last Sunday, which would be the day before, the Sunday before Christmas. Um, and if we can keep it a little flexible, that would certainly be the window, wouldn't be beyond that. Um, and if it's really busy and people want us to do it more often, then we can maybe add another day here or there. But that's the plan right now. And what would your hours be? The plan right now is to be open from 4 to 9 on Thursdays and Fridays, and then 12 to 6 on Saturdays. And I'm not sure Sunday, probably if we open on Sunday, it would be like 12 to 4, depending on whether the Patriots are playing or not. <laughs> And okay. they all, the, the beer would be served th those hours? Yes. Whenever, essentially, yes. they'd be served whenever you're open? Correct. Is that what you want? Correct. They, they may be less. They wouldn't, you know, we're, we're not looking for more than that. Um, and, yeah, we probably would. That's built around having the, the beer as an attraction. Uh, we're getting picnic benches from the park department, and then we'll get some tables and set it up like they have, uh, like we did at the Adams Inn. And like they, they've been doing on Sunday, I think on... Wednesday nights at the Adams Inn for um, most of the mm -hmm. summer, similar mm -hmm. to that. Are any of your Juventus food vendors? There may be. We haven't locked any food down. I think there's a couple that are interested. Uh, wouldn't be any preparation on site. Um, we are. We intend to get a couple of um, portable sinks and portable toilets because the bathroom there's uh, the bathroom in the space is not. Which space really is easy? It's the think? old Child World. Okay. Right, so right across from Alba. So. Um, <coughs> They do have bathroom, they do have water there, but it's not, it's downstairs and we just assume to stay away from downstairs. It's a little, not that safe as Jay knows. He's been on the site. Um, so, <coughs> and we can give you a list of who the food vendors If you could, because they'd, they'd have to get one day food licenses. We would absolutely yeah. do that. And we, we could extend it for all the dates on one license Perfect. if you needed yeah, to. Yeah, we so. just haven't got any lockdown on the okay. food. Okay. Hopefully we'll have some food. We may, um, if, if the board, allows we let we may invite some food trucks in on the sun on the saturday and it'll be in the back um on the parking way so it'll be in parking spaces and it's on a saturday so if 
because there's no real restaurants open in the square on Saturday. They usually don't open until the evening, so we may include that again to draw some, some folks in there. Because okay. we really want these businesses to succeed and make some money on the holidays. <coughs> Any questions or concerns from anyone in the audience? Seeing none. Board members, any questions, concerns? Second. 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 Yes. Yes. Second. Looking for a motion. To make a motion to grant the request of Quincy Chamber of Commerce for a special use permit beer and wine license for their annual holiday pop up market at 1469 Hancock Street. The market is scheduled to run from November 22nd to December 22nd. Hours of operation 4 p.m. to 9. Thursdays and Fridays and 12 to 6 on Saturday and Sundays represented by Tim Cahill. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good you. luck. Thank you. Good Thanks. I hope you all come. All right. Thank Thanks. you. Well, now you have beer. We may. <laughs> <laughs> Agenda item number two, here in regard the request of Quincy Youth Soccer for a special use permit for their fall jamboree at Veterans Stadium on November 10th. The event is scheduled from noon to five and will <coughs> include food trucks. And um, Kelly Cobble. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Welcome. If you could tell us a little bit about your fall jamboree at the stadium. Sure, so every year at the end of the fall soccer season, we'd like to have a celebration for all of, mo mostly the younger kids, so from five up to 12, 14. And um, we just have uh, ongoing short um, soccer games among the teams playing with each other. And then we also like to have uh, some food and refreshments and little games, and we give out trophies for the day. So it's just an annual celebration to kind of bring all of the kids and families together at the end of the season. Okay. And I will say in yes. the past, we've used the concession stand, which <laughs> if I don't have to see that anymore, I'd be really happy <laughs> uh, between the soccer and everything else that I've done. But um, the, uh, so this year we're trying uh, food trucks and we thought the first <coughs> no-brainer is the Montilios because mm -hmm. Hey, it's Quincy and it's and it's uh, good. The but we thought we might need a variety, so we did invite the um, mom's grilled cheese Mom truck as ago. well, right? Yeah. So um, we'll do what we have to do for them. I think the Montilio said that they already have uh, a permit in hand, but I think the other truck might need to do something. So yeah, Montilio's has a, a yearly license, so they're all right. set. But the other. Um, other food truck would have to just contact the health department for a one-day food license. Right, and I know they've been here too, yep, so they hopefully have. Yep. it won't be a problem. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Does anybody in the audience have any questions or concerns about the special use permit for the Fall Jamboree at Veterans Stadium? Seeing none, um, Chief. Are you all set with the with the food well, trucks? We need a food. You'll have to reach out to our fire prevention bureau for a food truck permit. Excellent. Okay. There we go. Looking for a motion. They need samples. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to grant the request of Quincy Youth Soccer for a special use permit for their fall jamboree at Veterans Stadium on November 10th. The event is scheduled from noon to 5 p.m. and will include food trucks represented by Kelly Cobble. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're all set. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy we'll your touch. event. Thank you. Number three on the agenda, here regarding the request of Granite Chin Promotions for a special <coughs> use permit, beer and wine license for pro boxing at the Armory on Wednesday, November 27th. The event is scheduled from 6 to 10. And Vincent Traietti. Hi, how are you? Come on up. Very good, thank you. We have <laughs> we have your application here, along with um, your check, and we understand this has been done before at the veterans at the um, uh, um, armory. Um, we tried making it an annual event right up to the time they closed down mm -hmm. the renovations, and I believe this was the first year that. 
they were up and running and ready to uh, receive us, yeah. Okay, and so how many matches are going to be on this evening? There's um, eight uh, cards scheduled. And is there anything else that you want to tell us about the evening? Are there tickets to buy or? There were tickets to buy. Most of them were online and at the door. Uh, again, as you are already well aware, we've held the event uh, quite a few times at that location, all incident free. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have uh, two uh, police officers scheduled for the detail. On top of that, we also have our own private security uh, that are very highly trained. And uh, the servers that are going to be serving the beer and wine, they're all TIP certified, <coughs> so they know when to say no to the people. Good where, where are you we getting take it now? very seriously. Where are you getting the, the servers and the alcohol as a company? Uh, the alcohol, we're just getting right from uh, the liquor store, matter of fact, right on um, Hancock Street in Wollaston. Get it for the cakes from there. So you do need to get it from a distributor. So whoever you have, we'll get it for the distributor. Yeah. So whoever you have doing um, your staffing mm -hmm. probably has a distributor that they use, okay. um, and you should do it that way because you just can't bring it in okay. unless you go through a distributor. I could, okay. I could have been wrong with that answer. Okay. All right. Well, just make I will sure. Make sure of it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, anybody in the audience have any questions or concerns about the one-day special use permit beer and wine license for the pro boxing at the Armory? Quick question, anyone from Quincy Fighting? Excuse me? Anyone from Quincy Fighting? Uh, right off the top of my head, yes. Uh, Chris Curry, Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> You've done this a number of years in the past, and I know there's been no hiccups, so. Yeah. I know it's a nice event. I think we had at least double digit years, 10 yeah. years. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question. The f you, you might have some food there? Um, if there's food, it would probably be like pizzas being brought in from Domino's. Okay, from a, from a Quincy facility, yes. licensed facility. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions, concerns? Looking for a motion. How do you uh, plan on promoting this event? Uh, <coughs> that's not my area of responsibility, but just, it is all. Just concerned cool. about flyers around the city on poles and fences. And oh, stuff. no, there's, okay. we've never done the flyers on poles. Okay, thank you. Uh, my son owns a couple of uh, boxing gyms. Okay. A lot of the promotion is through that. Sure. Okay. And through sponsorships. <coughs> thank you. I'd like to make a motion to grant the request of Granite Chin Promotions for a special use permit beer and wine license for pro boxing at the Armory on Wednesday, November 27th. The event is scheduled from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. represented by Vincent Trietti. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're all set. Thank you. Thank you Good very much. Good luck. Drop by. <laughs> Agenda item number four. Here we got in the request to Hamill Leiden Chapel for a special use permit food truck on December 1st for the Quincy <coughs> Christmas Parade Party and Chuck Phelan is here to represent. Hi Chuck, how are you? Hi. Why don't you tell us a little bit about <coughs> your What we have party. is we have, we've had this for several years now. We have an open house um, at Hamilton Chapel and the city is gracious enough to give us our entertainment with the, with the Christmas Parade coming down mm -hmm. the street. And uh, it's basically a great family event. A lot of people bring their kids and their family. One of the things we're looking to do this year is put a food truck. We used to cook the food separately on our own, but uh, we, we thought it would be better just to have a food truck and we'll bring that into the parking lot. We'll be people, people partaking will be guests of us at the open house. And, um, and so it, it goes the length of the parade and pretty much when the parade's <laughs> over, People might hang around for a little while, but it, it disperses pretty quickly. The main, the main focus of it is on the Christmas parade as it goes by. What kind of food are you looking for? Uh, it's it's uh, Roxy's uh, grilled cheese truck is what we're going to be having there. They do grilled cheese, macaroni and cheese, all different kinds of stuff. They've been at the, the food truck festival here in Quincy several times. We'll have to make sure that's a stop on the parade. Okay. <laughs> well, welcome. Everyone's welcome. 
that's pretty much what we got. Any questions or concerns from anyone in the audience regarding Hamel Leiden Chapel for a special <coughs> use permit for a food truck on December 1st? Seeing none, board members. Chuck, just if you could have the um, food truck people give the health department a call, they're going to yep. need a one day license from us. So thank you. And Chuck, they'll need to call uh, fire prevention for a permit for the truck. All right. Thank you. Looking for a motion. I'd like to make a motion to grant the request of Hamill Light and Chapel for a special use permit for a food truck on December 1st for a Quincy Christmas parade party represented by Chuck Bailey. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Chuck, you're all set. Thank you. Agenda item number five. Here in regard the request of Beauty China Tea Store for common victual license on the premise at 667 Hancock Street. Proposed hours of operation are 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Proposed manager is Lifey Hung. Hi, how are you? Uh, my name is Edwin. I am actually going to be speaking for Levi um, and Mr. White. Um, both are in a meeting in Washington. Okay. And your <coughs> last name? Yang, G-I-A-N-G. Okay. And why don't you tell us a little bit about Beauty China Tea Store? Uh, simply, it's a smaller bubble tea store. Um, bubble tea is kind of really newly introduced. Uh, over the past few years and we were looking to bring in um, fruit and milk tea uh, the fruit is locally from a local store distributor from um, Quincy as well and then the milk tea is brewed every morning um, alongside of that would be sausages and cake which are also from a local distributor and is brought in I believe the sausages are frozen but the cakes are made daily Monday through Sunday, we're expected to open 10 to 10 um, with three tables <coughs> in the waiting room. And it is a takeout, takeout facility. And is anything else I can provide? We have two stores open in China currently that are successful. So we were looking to bring it to Quincy now. Um, and it is brought, we brought it to Quincy because of the population with the students and hoping to succeed from that. What space are you taking over? What was there before? I'm unsure of the space that was previously there before, but it's right next to the China, which is like a mm -hmm. dim sum restaurant. So I do have your application <coughs> here. Everything seems like it's in order. Um, submitted to the health department was the floor plan and the proposed menu also Paul McCarthy was down there and signed off as well um, any questions or concerns from anyone in the audience regarding Beauty China tea store for a common victual license at 667 Hancock Street seeing none board members um, you'll need a, a, an inspection from the health department and a food license from us. So when you're ready, are you ready to open now? Uh, <coughs> I believe within the next month. Okay. Uh, I will make sure they Give us a call. Our inspectors will come down and then we'll, inspection. yeah. And then you'll need a food license. How many okay. seats is it, did you say? Uh, there's actually three tables that will be in the waiting area. So about three seats per table. So nine seats total. Um, but we don't plan on having people usually it's a pickup to go or deal with it. They don't they don't usually hang around. Okay. You'll Thank you. It's more of a waiting area. You'll need to set up an appointment with our fire prevention bureau for an inspection. Okay. They went by but it was closed. So Okay. So two things so far. Fire and health. Fire and health. Yeah. Fire and health. So um Contingent on the health and fire inspection, we'll grant the license accordingly. Looking for a motion. I'd like to make a motion to grant the request of Beauty China Tea Store for a common victual license for the premises located at 667 Hancock <coughs> Street. Proposed hours of operation 10 to 10. 10 to 10. Uh, every day? Yes, Monday through Sunday. Monday through Sunday. 
proposed manager is Leafy Hong. This is represented by Evan Jang and contingent upon health and fire department inspections and approvals. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're all set. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Agenda item number six here and regarding the request of Hishu Sushi at Stopping Shop for a common victual license for the premise located at 65 Newport Ave. <coughs> Hisho Sushi will take over for sushi preparation for Stopping Shop. And Kayla Davis, is Kayla Davis here? They said they were sending somebody, but they're out of state, so they have reached out to mm -hmm. Yeah, they have reached out to the Thank health you. department, um, our inspectors gone down there, spoken with them, will need to go back down, re-inspect, they'll need to come in for a food license. But I think they're aware that they have to do that, so. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are out of state and could not be here today. <coughs> so contingent on the health food license, um, I think we can go yeah. in inspection, I think we can go ahead and move forward on this. Um, are there any questions or concerns from anyone in the audience on Hisha Sushi at Stopping Shop at 65 Newport Ave? Is this a new service they're offering? No, no it's just a, a change. It's a new vendor. vendor. Okay. Seeing none, looking for a motion. I'd like to make a motion to grant the request of Hisha Sushi at Stopping Shop for a common victual license for the premises located at 65 Newport Ave. Hiso Sushi will take over the sushi preparation at Stop and Shop, represented by Kayla Davis, contingent upon health, food inspection, and approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All set. Agenda item number seven. Here regarding the request of RPM Motors Seals and Repair for a Motor 2 and Garage Repair License for the premise located at 165 Hancock Street due to a change of ownership, no <coughs> change to the existing operation, Manny Tavares, excuse me. Hi Manny, how are you? Well, thank you, how are you? Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you'll be doing at RPM? It's just a, a auto sales and repairs. We can do sell some cars and repair some cars also. Mm -hmm. And um, pretty much maintain everything the way it is. Mm -hmm. Monday to Friday, Monday to Saturday, from 8:30 to 6:30. What are you just either buying or working out a deal with your partner? Is that you're yeah. taking over the business essentially? I've done taking over now. I'm by myself, so pretty much by myself, and I'll continue to do everything, keep the building nice and shape. Okay. Yeah. I know that you've made a lot of repairs on yes. the building and the access in, and it looks nice. It's still a long way to go, but I'll get there. <coughs> okay. Okay. Um, currently, Manny is at uh, 15 vehicles, and he would like to go to 23. That's correct, yes. Um, would ask the board to take that into consideration this evening. Um, we did have um, Inspector... Detective Mark Folan go down and look at the premise and it is um, clean and maintained and um, he has invested in the property and um, is a good owner so um, if we could take that into consideration um, first um, would approve um, 23 cars under the max allowed under ordinance and then um, the motor, the repair and the motor to and garage repair license. Looking to see if anyone in the audience has any questions or concerns with RPM motor sales and repair for a motor to and a garage repair license and to go to 23 cars on the lot. Is one motion okay, or is it should it be two? Uh, it should be two, one for uh, the cars <coughs> and one for the um, motor sales and repair um, and garage repair license. Fire prevention asked that you give them a call so that they could do an inspection, 
I spoke to him before you were but they went by, but it was closed. I called him back, and then he told me to uh, reschedule for next week. I definitely will. Thank you. You don't do any auto body there? No, I don't. Okay. No, I wish I could. So, um, Jay, um, it's 23 cars and then the um, motor sales and repair for the motor to garage repair license. I'd like to make a motion to grant the request of RPM Motors and Sales <coughs> for a sales and repair license for the premises located at 165 Hancock Street due to a change in ownership. No changes to existing operation. This is for 23 vehicles in total. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Just make sure that you get to fire prevention and, sure. and come up and get your license, okay? I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. One motion, will do. Sure. <laughs> Next is agenda item number eight. Here and regarding the request of Deacon Transportation Inc. doing business as Old Town Trolley Tours for a fuel storage license and an automotive repair license for the premise located at 199 Commander Shea Boulevard, proposed manager Robert Gibbons, Gibson, attorney Edward Fleming. Hi, Ed, how are you? Good afternoon, um, uh, Madam Chair and members of the uh, licensing board. My name is Edward Fleming. I'm here on behalf of the applicant Deacon Transportation, <coughs> Inc. Uh, regarding this matter. It's, uh, they go by the name of uh, Old Town Trolleys uh, Tours, Inc. Um, and they operate the trolley business in Boston and throughout the United <coughs> States, in many different cities throughout the United States. Uh, this is a request for a fuel storage license, an automotive repair license, a secondary automotive repair license for the premises at 199 Commander Shea Boulevard. If I give you a little bit of background on this matter and history of the site, and then I'd like to have um, Mr. Gibson come up and speak um, on behalf of the company. I'm also joined by Chris Compton, who is the general manager of Old Town Trolleys and Matthew Minoli, who is the safety director of Dennis Burke Inc., which is an oil company that services the, the particular um, site uh, and other facilities owned and operated by Old Town Trolley. Um, the property at 199 Commander Shea Boulevard is a 3.39 uh, acre parcel of land that's, co that's uh, presently consists of a large commercial warehouse building. Uh, the property uh, was located initially in an industrial zone uh, and although housing has been built around this particular site, uh, the, the zoning changed from industrial to commercial a number of years ago back in the 1970s. In the 1970s the commercial building was constructed on the site and since 1970 the building has always been operated and used as a commercial use. It was initially used by Retail Stores Inc. as a delivery facility and warehouse Secondarily, it was uh, in interstate distributors for years, and then Hudson News acquired the site and operated as a distrib distribution center for its newspaper business uh, and utilized the site where trucks came and went from the site. Uh, large trucks uh, actually were parked and utilized the site uh, for a number of years. In 2008, this board uh, actually heard an application of Fallon Ambulance. Fallon Ambulance at that time sought to utilize the facility for the storage of its uh, ambulance vehicles and also for the fueling of its ambulance vehicles at the site. And they also sought at that time a repair license for Central Ave Automotive Repair that continues to utilize a portion of the site today. Um, those licenses were issued to Fallon Ambulance um, and they were permitted to store over 2,000 gallons of gasoline and diesel um, in an underground oil tank on the site, 3,000 gallons of gasoline and diesel above ground, and 45 or, or more um, ambulance vehicles within the building, and then 500 gallons of miscellaneous fuel. The applicant today, uh, and, and Fallon Ambulance, as this board may very well be aware, uh, no longer services the city of Quincy. Um, it no longer services some of the communities in the area and has sought to move their, their storage facility for their ambulances to other, other areas and communities it serves. And as a result, Fallon uh, sought out an opportunity <coughs> to, to sublease this space to other users and they uh, uh, became in touch with Old Town Trolleys and Old Town Trolleys 
is very interested in leasing the site. Hudson News continues to own the property, um, and they continue to, to um, uh, manage that site as it stands today. Old Town Trolley would like to essentially use the facility for the, almost the exact same purpose that Fallon Ambulance did. It would like to store, uh, in this particular case, however, it would like to store diesel fuel in an above ground uh, storage tank uh, within the corner of the building um, where it would service the vehicles at the, uh, for, and, and fuel the vehicles on the outside southwest corner of the building. The existing underground storage containers would be um, discontinued and there's some discussion, uh, Chief, um, about the removal of those tanks, uh, which Hudson News would be responsible for. Um, and my client would certainly cooperate with them in the removal of those tanks. Um, and, uh, and in addition to the fuel storage license and the storage of their vehicles within the building, as Fallon did, they would also seek a repair license for a portion of the facility. Uh, to repair their own facility, their own uh, vehicles. They will not use, unlike Fallon Ambulance, they will not utilize the services of Central Ave Auto, which will remain in the front uh, of the building. Central Ave Auto will be subdivided within the building through a demising wall. And I have a plan that shows that demising wall, which will be installed uh, in Central, uh, and Old Town Trolley will create its own repair space within the building and they seek to raise the building. I spoke with um, Mr. Duca about the need for building permits and things of that nature to, in order to do so. Uh, so the new storage tank will provide for 3,000 gallons of diesel fuel only, no gasoline, in a double-walled, above-ground uh, storage tank in the corner of the building with the appropriate state-of-art uh, fire suppression system. Um, Mr. Gibson can speak in more detail about that in a moment. They, they, um, they've indicated to me, the Old Town Trolley has indicated to me, they've operated in, in, um, since 2006 in Boston, filled numerous uh, vehicles over the years, uh, millions of gallons of, of uh, diesel fuel, and there's been no incident uh, during their occupancy of that building in, in Boston. There'll be 36 uh, vehicles with about 80 gallons of, of um, and, and uh, eight vehicles with 65 gallons for a total of about 3,400 of gallons of storage of diesel within the vehicles in the building as well. Um, so if I may, um, just show some of the plans and I, I can pass those around, Chief. Um, first, uh, the one of the building itself from the outside, it, uh, showing that Central Ave Auto is, mm -hmm. is in the front of the facility with the, uh, access to the rear of the facility as well. Um, a, secondary, a secondary plan that shows that Central Ave Auto will continue to maintain and, and utilize the front of the building, and the demising wall will be installed within the building to separate its use entirely from the other facility. There will be a secondary space for Old Town Trolley for their repair, and then the remaining area will be the garage. Um, the tank will be uh, installed in the, in, the, in the far southwest corner of the building and the vehicles will be serviced in the outside. And the outside right now is where the underground oil tank is located, right in the same the vicinity. So the vehicles will be serviced essentially in the same spot as they were before. And then the, the last uh, plan just shows that that section of the roof will be raised by uh, four feet in order to allow them to lift the vehicles. Uh, the, the trolleys, which are a little taller than the ambulances. Thank you. So if I may just have um, Mr. Gibson just speak about his expertise and a little bit of the operation. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. My name is Robert Gibson, and I've been with Old Town Trolley now 15 years. I'm the commercial fleet manager. Um, I'm, I actually my new title is I'm commercial <coughs> fleet manager in charge of product development and training. Um, we had, uh, again, we have Dennis K. Burke in the audience also. Um, we have been at 380 Dorchester Ave in South Boston since 1999. We own the building. In 2006, Mayor Menino wanted us to go green, so we went to biodiesel. We put, we went self-fueling. I worked hand in glove with the Boston Fire Department. And again, you give us the opportunity, we will work hand, hand in glove with you also. Anything you want, we shall do. Um, we have pumped 
one million six hundred and ninety five thousand gallons since two, the August of 2006 through our um, through our facility we have had not one incident and what how we do that is we have um, I have five mechanics that I'm actually in charge of um, they are the only people who come in contact with that fuel pump <coughs> none of the drivers are allowed to touch it the vehicles come in they are shut off my mechanics fuel we record how much fuel that we install in the vehicle the vehicle is then driven around the building and put to sleep at night diesel fuel as you know sir has a extremely low flash point diesel fuel is literally the same thing if you have an on a house that's heated by oil you have 200 between 250 and 275 gallons in your basement in, with an internal tank that's stored there constantly through the winter and summer months same with us we have a double wall tank we have jersey barriers <coughs> and our company i was i was instrumental in bringing this in um, to south boston we spared no expense we uh New England, northeast petroleum is the people who installed the pump it's 15 gallons per minute that that pump has a capacity to pump um, it's the, the fire suppression was done by Gorman it is a chemical 250 pounds internal two tanks and it had an external it had external nozzles internal nozzles and temperature sense sensing now I understand that they, and a Vita, we have a Vita, Vita route. I also, through Dennis K. Burke, have, there's a cell phone on the top of the tank. If they, and I've been called at, at, at sometimes at 12, 12, 11.30, 12 o'clock at night, saying we got a discrepancy, and it was just a trolley that came in late for fueling. So my, it, but it shows you that we're, const, we're constantly monitoring this. The other thing is, is the tanks that are in Commander Shea Boulevard, come to find out, are 19 years old. A tank's lifespan is between 20 and 25 years. We, I am a firm believer. I want nothing to do in this deal. Um, that's the other. That's the other problem. You are right near those type. The the building is right near those tidal flats, and if. If I lose five gallons a day, I'm going to find out where it's going. If I lose five gallons a day and it's going into the ground, I've got no way of monitoring that, especially with the way the system is set up. That system, again, was installed 19 years ago. Um, and it's seeping into the ground. So uh, we want nothing to do with gasoline. We only have a few gasoline vehicles. Um, that are used for manage, managerial tasks. The main, the main thing is the, di is the diesel storage. I'm an ASE master tech. I've been an ASE master tech now. Next time I recertify, it'll be 45 years. So I am in charge of the mechanical crew. Um, nobody else touches those trolleys. And again, nobody else fuels but my guys. I'm in charge of Boston, Nashville, and Washington. Um, I was in, um, was instrumental in um, developing the fueling system. We're building a new building down in Washington, and we, I made quite a few trips down there talking to the contractor. <coughs> and um, I actually did not make any friends corporate-wise because they were trying to go with a system that I was not very happy with, and we went with a more expensive system to monitor and. Uh, for the fire suppression. So um, anyway, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. So the old tanks will be replaced? The old tanks are going to be- I know not by you, by Hudson, but they're going to be- they're, Yeah, they're going to go away. I don't know what, and, it, and Mr. Fleming can speak to that. I don't know what the agreement is, but they're not going to- You're not, not going to be them. filled with anything from us. Mm -hmm. And again, the gasoline flash point, and again, I'm speaking to the uh, to the fire chief. The gas that that's that's 
literally a bomb. They're, they're sitting on top of a bomb. We want nothing to do with the gasoline. Absolutely, positively nothing to do with the gasoline. It's only diesel fuel. And again, like I said, the tank is double wall, and we monitor it like crazy. Again, and again, uh, Matt can speak to can speak to the system that they have for notifying us about the disparity in the tank. Um, on, your, on your point, Chief, uh, they'll, they'll be discontinued. There's still negotiation ongoing between uh, Hudson News and my client as to the responsibility of the removal and when they'll be removed. Uh, but they'll be discontinued, and we're, we're certainly happy to a condition that would prohibit us from ever utilizing those those uh, those tanks. Um, I spoke with Captain Keaveny about that as well, and he raised concerns about, you know, the, the uh, making sure and ensuring that there's an agreement about the removal of those tanks for environmental reasons. So we're on top of that, and we'll continue to have that discussion. So that's essentially our presentation uh, of the matter tonight. I only just want to highlight a couple things, and I know. There was a concern raised um, by a, by a budding uh, condominium owner. There was a concern raised. Yes, about I'll get to that. Um, yeah. And so we're, we're certainly uh, happy to answer those questions as well. Um, but going to your point, uh, Mr. Duca, as we talked about this a number of times, the uh, the facility will be clearly separated to designate a separate uh, facility for uh, Central Ab Auto for the use of their repair license. This repair license that we're seeking today is for the separate facility to be utilized by uh, Old Town Trolley um, and, and uh, the roof <coughs> raising and, and things of that nature will be done by way of a building permit with much more detailed plans that you've requested. And again, the reason why we have to raise the roof, my vehicles are 13 feet, four inches tall. So in order for me, especially my height to get underneath comfortably, we have to raise it, uh, an, an, you know, an additional four feet, uh, especially because of the um, the, the heating system and lights. So that was one of the things when we, when we walked in. Um, and again, to your point, Chief, I would love to take and just fill the tanks with water until we get them out of the ground because I absolutely positively, as you know, vapors are more explosive than the liquid itself. So. And, and just for the record, I want to read this. Uh, the fire prevention set, set sent to me so that just so that it's all taken care of properly. The existing underground storage tanks cannot be abandoned in any in place. Mm -hmm. They must be removed. Need an agreement between the seller, which is Fallon Ambulance, and the buyer, Old Town Trolley, as to when and who will be responsible for removing the underground storage tanks. And on that note, Chief, it's not the building's not being sold. Um, so it really, the re it will still be rest with the ownership group, which is Hudson News. I don't know that I spoke with uh, Captain Keaveny about that detail. I think he might have understood that it was being sold. Okay. Fallon never owned it. It's just leasing this facility. Okay. Which is, now you're going to lease it? You're coming with that, that is correct. That is correct. It's just that the building that we're in presently, we owned it and we and it, it has been sold. If, if you know about Dorchester Ave, it's going through a renaissance. And the, it was sold, and it's going to be eventually a few more streets and a bunch of condominiums. The, the site that we're on right now is a little over an acre. And oh, I'm sorry, I thought you had a uh, little over an acre. So it, it has been sold, and basically we're looking for a new home. Thank you. So, so I would like to get on the record. Oh, Chief, no, no, I'm sorry. I was just say, so as for the idea of just filling them with water, I don't think that's from what I understand from fire prevention, mm -hmm. that they will have to be removed. I, and, and there's not a problem. I'm, I'm just worried, especially where, because we have no interest in putting anything in them. I, I would be, I would, you know, I'll speak with Mr. Land, who is the owner of my company. I want them pumped dry. I don't want. I don't want anything in them. I don't want. I don't care if we have to fill them with cement. I think from what they told me. Unless there's a problem with, say, a retaining wall that could collapse or something like that, if you're able to get out <coughs> and remove them, mm -hmm. they must be removed. You we'll, can, cannot. We'll make sure we follow up with ownership about that. Not, okay. I'll pass it on to the client. Yeah. So, so double, double check with our fire prevention bureau. Yeah. But that's that's what I've been told. Well, and again, have no problem. You instruct me what you want done, and I'll make sure that it is. They'll be able to to assist you with it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
So we did get a letter um, dated October 17th from Richard A. Williams, the management agent from the Seawinds Condominium Trust. And the Seawinds Condominium Trust um, has concerns about the property being sold, which now we know is going to be leased, and the details of how the gasoline will be stored in the vehicles and what safety measures are being taken to prevent spills and other sorts of environmental issues. I think that those obligations have been sought out here and, and we trust that that's all going to be taken care of under the guidelines of the fire prevention and um, Jay's office. However, um, furthermore, the Sea Winds objects to the statement in the letter where it indicates kindly provide a copy of the enclosed notice from the Quincy Board of License Commission to each of the unit owners at 90 Quincy Shore Drive at your earliest convenience. So um, I, I had some conversation with Ed, please, Ed, if you don't mind. Um, and when the abutters notices were sent out it was sent <coughs> out to the association not to each individual owner that's right so and, um, it, was, uh, and, and it still remains my position uh that the that the unit owners don't own the land they own units within the building and that the, they they actually assign um uh, the control and management of the facility to the condominium association, i.e. the management company, and they're entitled to notice, hence why I provided notice. The, the notice requirement actually is, it requires registered mail, which in this case would be $2,700 of registered mail to the unit owners. So what we did is we provided notice to the condominium associations. However, in the, in the, in the event of smaller units or buildings in the rear on Quincy Shore Drive, I actually provided notice to each and every unit um, within those uh, because they were smaller buildings and, and we could do so and I provided the cards that, that indicate that but I believe that notice to the trust is sufficient in fact in Seawood's case they actually uh, on their own website um, indicated that they appointed the management company of Paradigm to manage the condominium association and they, they provided a contact for all notices to be sent to their contact paradigm management association. So I understand their position. I only I only indicate added that to my letter as a courtesy, as a courtesy to them, asking them if they could also notify their condominium owners. I believe, quite frankly, as a condominium association, they could simply send out a mass email to all the condominium associations more than we could to notify all the unit owners if they had any interest in this matter. But regardless of that, they've expressed their concerns and their opposition to the, to the, to the matter, and we've responded to those concerns. So I, I understand the concerns. In fact, I can pr provide, if you'd like, Madam Clerk, the, the, um, the Seawinds uh, site, which is, this is their website, appointing the management company as Paradigm, and also providing on their website that contact be provided um, to, to Paradigm as their management company. But again, if, if um, I, I hate to, I hate to go through a registered mail of twenty-seven hundred dollars. Uh, my poor secretary would spend probably four hours putting those, uh, those registered mail uh, letters together. I'm not. We're certainly not looking to avoid uh, the need to provide notice to condominium uh, owners. We thought that the condo association could do so. I know, and I saw Mr. Timmons' letter, and he did indicate that there was a recent. Uh, there was a recent finding by the appeals court, but the appeals court doesn't deal with notice. What they deal with is who is the interested party that in, has an interest in the real estate. And what he says is that each of the condominium association owners have an interest in the condominium common area, which includes the real estate. And hence why Mr. Timmons said he thinks that, but it, it, to me, I think it's still not settled law. We've always in the past, not we, but I think notice typically in the past has always been provided to the public. But thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, any questions or concerns from anyone in the audience? Please come on up and state sure. your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Ma'am, up here, please. My name is Pat 
Desmond, and I live at 90 Quincy Shore Drive, which is right next to this property. 90 Quincy Shore Drive has frontage on Quincy Shore Drive. The entrance is actually on Commander Shea Boulevard and the No Name Road. I'm a trustee of the Sea Winds Association, and our position is that this was not sufficient. If they're going to quibble over $2,700, as the reason to not send out this to all of the owners. How are we gonna get these things done that need to be done safely, like the tanks removed and this <coughs> big construction project right next door to us? Um, this is a tremendous concern. And, um, you know, the owners of, of the property at Sea Winds, um, some of them do have email access, some of them are older people who do not have computers. Um, and we know that we have to reach certain people by email and others by regular mail. Um, there was no attempt to even send out regular mail. I get listings from the city of Quincy when there are hearings that affect this neighborhood all the time by regular mail. They don't have any trouble sending them to all the owners <coughs> when the city's paying the 50 cent bill or whatever it is. Um, this, this should be that the 150 owners in this building are noticed. Um, some of them are here today who were able to come you know, a meeting at four o'clock in the afternoon for people who have regular working hours <coughs> is a difficult situation. But we have other concerns beyond this too. The safety concerns are, are particularly important. But there are also concerns on the Fallon Ambulance Building right now. There are signs that say, not to run the engines and leave them idle for more than a few minutes. Um, and it's ignored from time to time, but there's a big phone number up on the building too, and people next door at Seawinds who have balconies looking out to this and see these trucks, ambulances running. We'll call that number and pretty soon somebody from Brook Road, where the, the offices are, will get back to that site and those things will be shut off and the noise will stop. We want to be sure that something like that is going to continue if this is going to be the same sort of operation. And, um, you know, and we also might want to know a little bit more about this raise the roof thing. The, the four feet doesn't sound like a lot, but it it's going to be a big construction project right next door to our building. So that's, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Andrew Mearns. I've been a 12-year unit owner in uh, Seawinds Condominiums, uh, which is uh, right next door. Um, we, I, so in 12 years, I re all the time I get letters just about things going on in the area, certified and otherwise, letting me know personally what's going on and also to our uh, management company. So um, I, I would definitely want to see communication with the 150 unit owners continue. I don't accept that it costs, the fact that it costs money to someone else is our responsibility for not knowing what's going on. So it's very important that we keep open communication uh, regardless of the cost. Um, so we are of course, you know, I, I think my unit's among the closest to the, the fuel depot and the entrance, so I get a lot of noise. Um, we try to be good neighbors, and we also ask that our neighbors be good neighbors to us, too. And so the ways that, uh, the things that we would ask for are um, uh, management of uh, noise and light pollution. We have an ongoing issue now where we've got the, the lighting on the building, on the, uh, on the ambulance building. It's not downwash lighting. It's just, it just blasts the whole wall of the building right now. So we have to close our drapes and stuff at night. If I want a night, I, I haven't had to buy any night lights. I just open the drape a little bit, and it's boom. So uh, we could use a little bit of help with that. Um, and then the sound is, of course, an issue. Diesel engines make noise um, when, the, when the fuel truck is there. Uh, they've been, they're good about coming in the morning when it's not going to keep people up. But it's, it's loud when these trucks are dieseling and running. Um, and the ambulance company is generally pretty good about not letting the, the trucks just diesel and, and make a lot of noise. I'm right there, and I work at home. So um, it's, a, it's a bit of a racket, and it can keep people up. So we, we just ask for you know, you know, a good neighbor policy in terms of uh, 
continuation of keeping the noise down, um, <coughs> get a fix to the light problem, and we would want to, regardless of the cost, keep the communications open with the unit owners if we could, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Victor. I, I, I'm a unit owner at the Seaman's Condominium. Victor, uh, your last name for the record? Uh, Tichellis. Um, I've been living there for 10 years. Um, I actually, yeah, my neighbors are very eloquent well, as far as expressing what they, uh, they uh, desire about their, uh, their neighbors and their, uh, their way of life. Um, I, I just I really would have liked to have seen the, uh, the plans they have here. I mean, they're describing uh, where all these tanks are going to be and whatnot in southwest here, southwest. I don't know. I don't know how to make it out, relate that to where the building is. They're talking about a flashpoint. Uh, if anything happens, I know they, they mentioned earlier that um, uh, no incident at Fallon uh, as far as um, fuel going, uh, going on. Um, I know there's no, no incident as far as like safety issues, but they do idle a lot when they, when they fuel. And that's always an issue with, uh, with um, you know, with the, with the Fallon is the idling. Um, the noise, I, know, I, I wasn't aware of this, uh, this uh, company moving in, wanting to move in. Um, like I said, I didn't get any kind of communication. I think it would have been more respectful, you know, for the community to at least, you know, um, show yourself and, and describe what you want to do and let it be known, you know, what's going on. I had no idea. I just got an email and I just really don't don't understand that right now. But as far as, um, you know, at least letting us know, you know, what's going on. There's a lot of construction going on there right now. And my initial concerns are pollution, you know, air pollution, noise pollution, site pollution. You know, my neighbors expressed that eloquently. Um, I have kids. Um, my concern, too, is the... Um, you know, we're having a lot of FedEx trucks moving around there now. So the safety, you know, there have been concerns. I know the duck tours in Boston, there was an accident uh, involving a pedestrian. Um, I know they're not the duck tours, but, you know, they are buses. And, uh, you know, there are kids in the neighborhood that walk around there. I mean, what are they doing about safety? And, and um, so I just thought, you know, it just seems I would like to see the plans. Um, and it would be nice to, you know, I, I welcome these new neighbors, but yeah, if there would be, you know, just congenial relations, you know, mm -hmm. as far as, as far as, um, you know, just being amiable. So I would like to see the plans. Is there any way that I can see the plans? Sure. Yourself. Those are more just renderings. They're not actual real detailed plans, but- Oh, they're not detailed plans. <coughs> oh, okay. Oh, all right, I see. All right. You can see the other pages actually show the leaves. Counselor. Thank you, Rebia. Thank you, the interior of the corner. So if there is a what sort of an issue with the diesel in a tank. Please, so if you could please oh, go up to the mic. I'm not, I'm not familiar with the science of fire. So a flash point is what? Is that like 200 degrees? Is that the... I think the, it might be 140-ish for diesel, but don't hold me to that. So I know the distance from the tank to the Seawinds condominium. I, I don't know the distance, probably about 150 feet. Would that, if there's anything, would that affect the, the property in any way? Or I, I don't... I don't know the math. As it was said, uh, diesel is not as flammable and combustible as gasoline. It's uh, you could basically have a puddle of diesel on the floor uh -huh. and throw a lighted match in it, and it won't burn. Oh, okay. And the existing tanks, the existing tanks are right here. Yeah, yeah I know. I see those tanks. Right. There's larger, larger tanks than a gas. Right, and right, diesel right. That are, that are more so yeah, I mean, you know, if you guys, I mean, like I say, you come in, you do your business, just, you know, be, you know, as far as respectful for the, you know, for the neighbors, you know, as far as noise and lighting, it's, it's usually, you know, it's what my neighbors has, you know, eloquently expressed earlier, so that's it. That's all I, that's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Ed. Counselor. Ed, if you could. You know, it seems to me, li listening to the concerns of the neighbors, that actually, I think, as far as safety goes, and maybe the fire chief will want to weigh in on it, it seems like it's going to be a safer operation, a cleaner operation. Although I do hear their concerns with the noise and the idling. Yes. I would assume there's come some kind of agreement that will be put in place or 
uh, some kind of a contact method so that if the trolleys, because I know diesel is a little bit louder, that when they're gassed or whatever, they're put back into storage for the evening and then they come and go in the, in the morning. Would that be, <coughs> could we address that? And we certainly can. We can certainly add conditions to any kind of decision that this body may have in ensuring that those kind of measures are taken. That's my only um, real concern is. Idling and yes, and as I mentioned, we, when we're going to fuel, we're going to shut them off. Um, to your concern about you know the idling, we're going to take the tanks from being external and we're going to put it inside the building. So it's actually going to make things much better off for you for you people for the simple reason that you're not going to have any oil spills. There's going to be nothing in the ground that can contaminate your property because we are going to cease on using it. It's to and this was one of the things when when the owners that own our company came up from Florida I was extremely concerned I wanted nothing to do with the Quincy properties you because mean, it's speak about the idling and the noise and lighting though um, yes that, that really as, as far as the idling goes what's, what's going to happen is the trolleys will pull in it'll be by the exit door they're going to shut mm -hmm. off and the only reason we do this is because the city of Boston would not allow us to fuel inside the building. I don't know how Quincy feels about that, but that'll also, if we bring them in and we fuel inside the building, you're going to hear absolutely nothing. But again, that is not my call. We'll do whatever you want as far as the lights goes, and that's, that's what the gentleman, Chris, we were talking about this as you were stating your concerns. We have no issues at all with talking to all your representatives or all of your all of your your you know your residents. Things that are bugging you about the present, we will you'll have a direct phone number. It'll either be my cell phone or it'll be the uh, the general managers. And again, we go out of our way to be good neighbors. So on that note, yep. on that note of being a good neighbor, um, did somebody reach out to Council Harris? I did. Okay, yeah. and I didn't. I didn't speak with him about it. I did. I did indicate to him exactly what the proposal was, and if he had any questions, to contact me. And I did not hear from him. Okay, so with being a good neighbor, mm -hmm. I think it would be fair to have some kind of a community meeting with. The people I mean there's three about us here out of 150 condominium condominiums well, that, are, <laughs> that have families and and so for that you know I mean I, I appreciate you coming I appreciate everything that you've put together today I think it's solid and but I, I just worry about notification and and for that I'm, I'm a no vote if we're going to go to a vote today. Um, and, and, and we can, and, and we can take a roll call vote. But I, I think that you have, as for being a good neighbor, you know, um, the questions and concerns that are, are laid out here today are valuable. And, and so I know that you want to work with everybody in the neighborhood mm -hmm. and that starts with your direct abutters. And, it will be, and, and I certainly understand and, and you're concerned about that for sure and, and, uh, and I know that my client's not going to be up and operational for some time here. Yes, yeah, September of next year. So probably like the year before they're even operational. Um, they do however have certain uh, contingencies in their lease negotiations that makes it difficult. Um, but I understand your concerns, I, I, but the, the point I'm making is that they would certainly be agreeable to following up even if this body were to take a vote, um, to having that meeting with the community to ensure that all the operational issues are appropriately addressed. I think that the issue, however, is, is that this, since this is simply just a continuation of use, um, I hate to stop this, the permitting and, um, and, and ask that we maybe make it contingent upon that, those kind of matters being addressed. But, but it's not, not going to be before the board. No, I understand. The, the questions and concerns of the neighbors. Okay. Right. Uh, um, I'd like to address one other thing that the gentleman brought up. I understand. Um, as far as pollution goes, 
My oldest vehicle is a 2009. They all have uh, pollution uh, equipment on them. They um, are state of the art. I have 10 2015s Freightliner chassis. Uh, every one of the vehicles has a DPF filter, which means it grabs soot. So uh, Dennis K. Burke can attest to it. What we have done is we have arrested 200 million tons of soot into the air in Boston by changing, by moving up to the, the new equipment. We're very environmentally conscious. That's why we're going with the, that's why we use biodiesel. I think you've met your obligation with the safety and the regulations. That's not the concern. Mm -hmm. The concern is the direct debutters. Oh, and, so and, and, we I, are meeting again on November 12th. Will that, I mean, a couple of weeks. In a moment. In a moment. Um, I, that's fine, and we can certainly agree that the matter be continued to November 12th. That that's the preference of, of the of the body and, and you, <coughs> chair. Um, I don't know if I can get a neighborhood meeting by then. Uh, councilor is in the middle of a re-election, so I think that I'm not even sure when the elections happen. November 5th. Fifth. Um, so it may be difficult to get a neighborhood meeting, but I'll certainly reach out to him. Even if it's with the condominium association, yeah, and it, the council doesn't need to be there, but just so that the uh, the the abutters have a voice, sure. and and these concerns were valid, and and I'm sure that others in that complex are going to have some concerns as well. I agree with your safety concerns. I think that you've you've. You have a strong uh, business going here, and, and no one's against that. This is just my opinion. I, I just I have a, a just a clarification. Now, when you were saying that you notified the other rebutters and they were smaller condo yeah, I units, were, and I in a, like, and each unit was no each. I think it's like unit a, there owner? were some four unit um, uh, associations. Some some of which were individual. There were some homes that were individually owned. Mm -hmm. Those individuals were, I, were were notified, and then I think on the smaller condos, I may have misspoken. Um, that uh, it may have been the trust that was uh, that was notified on that as well. I but would I would have a, an issue honestly if yeah. the smaller condos, each condo owner was notified in a smaller condo, but was not notified in the larger condo just simply because yeah. of the number of the unit I, owners. I don't think that that was the case. I think I missed. I'd like to, I'd like to find that. I'd like sure. to know that honestly. But but I having think. even having said that, I, I I understand the chair's concern about notice, and and I and respectfully, I, I wasn't. Like I said, I wasn't trying to avoid notice. It was just very cumbersome in, in, in the time frame that we had available to us to, to provide the notice as required by this, the ordinance or as the, as the city solicitors agree is required by the ordinance. But we'll provide appropriate notice. I'll reach out to the council again, see if we can set up a meeting through him. And if not, I'll try to re reach out at least to the, uh, to the condominium association that's been represented here. Uh, and and you could send that regular mail. Yeah. That would satisfy us, you know, yeah. that you didn't have to do the, the registered mail. I'll management company as well who may be able to assist me in, in uh, providing notice to folks. But yes, I will do so. And um, and if we could, if this could be continued to the 12th, we'll make every effort to try to. And so. we're also meeting on the 19th. If, okay. if you couldn't get your meeting together, there's two back-to-back -back meetings. That's great. Thank you, Councilor. Is any of the folks that spoke from the condo association, does that <coughs> alleviate any of your concerns or, or allay some of your fears? I don't know if you're willing to speak again whether some of these conditions that we were just have just spoken about, does that does that assist you? If you ask me, I think they violated my trust by not notifying me firsthand. I don't I don't see how I can trust them again. So if you're not gonna like initially communicate with me something up front on the level, I don't see how you would do that again. I provided it to the trial, which I believe was, was right. He he thought it was adequate. Well, he and was no one was looking to to hoodwink well, he anyone here. Diligence. No one's no one's doing. But anything. he's willing to do that now. So well, yeah. Well, he shouldn't get a second chance. Okay. Thank you. Well, yeah. I think if you do this again on in no November twelfth, um, the and notice goes out to the owners in the meantime. The assessor's records are you know public. They're. Mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to go to the association to find out who's in the building. Yep. Um, you know, that's... Mail for a community meeting of some sort. Yes. 
Thank, thank you. you. Great. Thank you very much. If I could, Nicole. Yes, uh, of course. To put aside some of your concerns about the flammability, the flashpoint, gasoline is minus 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Diesel is between 125 and about 180. What does that mean? Fahrenheit. It means that, like I said, you could drop a match in and it won't burn. Gasoline is much more volatile. Mm -hmm. What they're going to use as diesel is much safer. So you don't have to, you know, less concerns on that. Right. It's uh, diesel greener than the gasoline? It's biodiesel. Biodiesel. Bio -diesel. It's yeah. basically an organic fuel, which is under a diesel, and it's roughly around the same uh, flash point, whether it's bio or a uh, carbon fuel out of the ground. They're very similar, if that's what you were, were asking. So I just want to thank you. I think it's a great solution to let all the unit owners know. I think I agree with you that, you know, even regular mail is fine as long as, you know, we sort of have two weeks or ten days in advance to, to make some time on our schedule to make sure people are there. But we really appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. John. Thank you. Thanks for your patience, John. Thank you very much. Um, where is the tank going to be? Is it in the back right-hand corner, like behind the building, Attorney Fleming? Yes, it's inside of it. From the street, it's in the, it's in the back right hand. So if I was looking at it from the street, it's in the back right hand. My question would be with this, the people from the sea winds are here. Um, all, all I can think of is Eric. Eric, just like the guy that lives down there that comes to everything, he'd be here um, if he had got notified. But Louisburg Square, those are condos. Were the people in Louisburg Square notified individually? Yeah. Were they notified? I don't know what the, what the cards indicate. Okay, because th this is just from my view of, of um, I'm a real estate broker myself, so I'm going to use that as, as an expert witness here. Um, basically, the difference between an apartment building and a condominium building, so um, West Guantanam Street, where one's a condo and one's an apartment, is you can get away with that. If it's an apartment, you can notify the people that own the apartment building, and they have to notify the individual people. But when people have condos, Property rights, every single person has a right. Now, that guy, did your name Bob? Bob, yeah. He made an excellent presentation. I mean, I mean, you know, when I was just listening to Attorney Fleming, I'm like, you know, no way, no way. But Bob's like, you know, Bob's very convincing, so you'll be good at a neighborhood meeting and stuff. It's not like Attorney Harris isn't going to want Bob there speaking and stuff. But we do have to do things the right way. And we have to give people their chance to complain. And, you know, I, I kind of think. It is weird because we're mixing industrial zones and we're mixing residential. But the thing is, is that building has been there forever. So everyone that didn't move down there before knew that building was there. It's not like they created a building that wasn't there before. But we do get an opportunity, though, as a city. We are changing that if a business goes out of business, I believe we would bend over backwards for failing ambulance because they were a true partner with the city. The new people who are coming, um, you know, I feel that I would rather bend over backwards for the people that live in the Sea Winds and the people that live in Louisburg Square Thank because you. those people are the backbone of the city. The, we welcome new people coming to the city. Um, FedEx already is making it terrible for the poor people that live out there. And, you know, this just, like I said, no, I almost feel like this should just be re-advertised again. They should have to start all over from square one and you shouldn't even be able to continue. How can you continue a case that was not properly advertised? And I will it is, that. It was advertised. It was advertised on 1011 in the Patriot Ledger. And for that, we're going to continue it. If everybody on the board is in favor of that. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to get a motion to continue. November 12th? November 12th, yes. Like to make a motion to grant a continuance for Deacon Transportation Inc. Old Town Trolley Tours for a fuel storage license and automotive repair license for the premises located at 199 Commander Shea Boulevard uh, to November 12th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda, item number nine. Hearing got in the review the status of the beer and wine license issued to Rich Deal Convenience at 1205 Hancock Street. This item was continued from September 24th 
Attorney Robert Fleming. Hi. Thank you. Uh, How are you? Members of the board. Uh, I apologize for subjecting you to another Fleming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're the good one. <laughs> Um, I do represent uh, 1205 Hancock Street LLC, the owner of this particular licensed beer and wine. Um, uh, I, on behalf of my client, I want to thank this board over the past year for its consideration, its granting of all these extensions on this license. Uh, the board has understood that my client purchased this license a few years ago for $75,000. They were not available at that, at that time. Uh, he's gone down a, a few different avenues on either selling this license, um, and there were licenses recently available, so that was not an avenue that he, could, he got too far, uh, or locating other properties for a transfer. Uh, I was here in September requesting, you know, and advising this board that there was an opportunity to potentially purchase a property, um, and uh, I'm not at liberty to, to discuss the because it's a little confidential, but. That continues negotiations. It's a little complicated because of the existing use that's there. Uh, it's more automotive, so there's environmental concerns and things of that nature. Um, I wasn't even going to really request a, an extension, you know, this evening, and my, my client uh, completely understands that. Um, I just wanted for this board to understand that he is that he's really trying. Um, he, he's, he, he knows this license, if it's uh, taken back by the city, it will go quickly because um, I know there's people that are waiting for this particular license. Um, however, I will, I will request, you know, one last time, and I know I said that last time as well, for he, he, just a short extension. He is paid, you know, through this year uh, for this license. Um, so on his behalf, I would just request um, so we can work out some details to this, you know, this potential purchase of, of this property. Will it go? I don't know. Um, I haven't been too involved in negotiating with him. He's, it's really up to him and his partner in doing that with the, with the owner. But I know that some uh, more complicated concerns came up. If it's going to be feasible, uh, a little bit of due diligence period to analyze the site and things of that nature. Um, if it goes, there certainly will be contingent on um, permitting, zoning. There will be a change of use for that particular property. Uh, but we can, if we get to that bridge, we can cross it then. Um, but right now, I would just, you know, respectfully request just a, a, a short extension. I would request, you know, through the end of the year, because um, I know there's a little bit of due diligence on my client's part to, again, you know, analyze this site um, before he, you know, finalizes this, this possible, uh, you know, purchase. Of this so he wants to he wants to hold on to the license for he a little does. bit longer, and he is interested in opening. At a different location with this license, is that, that what you're saying? That's correct. It's him that, that wants it. It is. It is him. You know, and, and uh, I'll, I'll. I don't want to repeat myself from from prior hearings, but uh, he was essentially f almost forced out of uh, 1205 because it was a, a transaction, new purchase. Taxes went through the roof, and there were a few tenants in the building, retail, uh, that just could no longer afford the proration of the taxes, and that's why he had to, we had to settle and and uh, terminate the lease off. What, what other businesses does he have in the city? Uh, right now he owns a, a liquor store in Brewer's Corner. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's Discount Liquors. Um, he has a smoke shop uh, that's on Franklin, Franklin, which because of the um, uh, Baking, just, uh, yeah. Governor Baker's, uh, it, it's challenging for him. He's surviving. Uh, we'll see where that goes. Um, and then he had owned this Richdale as well. So he's really, you know, has an investment uh, in, in the city and, and would like to be able to continue. He runs a good, um, you know, a great shop in both. I'm not, a, I'm not a smoker, so I don't really visit that. Um, but the liquor store has done uh, very well. Uh, he's actually looking at, you know, potential investment further in that, in that area, uh, which, would be, which would be great. Um, to shed some light on um, the annual renewal for the ABCC will um, be going out next week and needs to be signed um, by the business owner that they are in operation on November, by November 30th. So Understood. it seems to me like he did pay for it, um, but that would be the last stop date regardless of what this board decides today. So it'll be the November 19th hearing date then, or? So 
that we could if we if we that. don't get um, the the notice back saying that they are in operation yeah. by November 30th it's automatically taken anyway understood okay. um, under chapter 138 okay um, but but that would be up to the board um, here today whether to extend it um, <coughs> So then I, I mean, I don't see any downside for extending it if we can. Yeah. I don't have an issue with it either. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, he's been forthcoming all the way along, so he's really, really trying. Yes. Yeah. So looking for a motion. <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to continue the status hearing of the Bear and Wine license issue to Ridsdale Convenience, 1205 Hancock Street, to November 19th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much once again. Really, really appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you. In other business, we do have the review of the holiday hours off-premise licensees may remain open until 11.30 p.m. the day before November, uh, the day before the holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. So November 27th, December 24th, in December 31st. Off-premise licensees may not sell or deliver alcohol on Thanksgiving Day 1128 or Christmas Day 1225. On-premise licensees may not sell alcohol until noon on Christmas Day 1225. All licensees may sell or deliver alcohol on New Year's Day. On-premise licensees extension of hours until 2 a.m. on New Year's Eve. Any objections on the hours of operation? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And we're looking for a motion to waive the reading and approve the minutes from the previous hearing. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next meeting is November 12th, 2019. And looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That concludes this license board hearing this evening.